I need some more parts, so it's a good time to dig into the male queue. Each of these are two pieces rotary encoder and USB ISP AVR programmer. So these are just standard breadboard friendly pin header boards for rotary encoder with the push button. So for quick access, I have some encoders just standalone that would need to go into a PCB, but for breadboarding, if I wanted to quickly get some sort of Arduino thing running with a display and prototyping a rotary encoder, I wanted some of these on hand. And this AVR programmer interface comes with a ribbon cable, an adapter board, depending on which type of programming header might be on a board. So we have SPI pins and power pins. So we either plug the programming header directly on a target device or use the adapter if it has this kind of pinout. So I wanted this to make it easier to program certain things from the Arduino IDE that I would normally have to go get an Uno or Nano and flash it with the AVR ISP firmware to program devices over SPI. So this hopefully will make that a little easier. Some miscellaneous parts I've been ordering that I may be using in the coming months. And these are quantity 50 LDR, light dependent resistors. So I turned on a light source. I'm going to put this as close as I can to a light bulb. So I saw 230 something ohms when I could get this directly on the light. And if I try to put it in darkness, just going that much, we got 700 K. So I don't know if that can go over a meg or so, but it goes from relatively low to significant resistance. So these might be put to use where I want light intensity to change characteristics of maybe an op-amp audio effect circuit, maybe some sort of modulation, whether it's volume or pitch. And I have some different value ones. So I think this was something that came up on one of those sales and I just got a different part number. 50 pieces of DC jack, 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter, one of the common values. I already had a bunch of these from maybe five years ago, but I've been using them up and I'm going to need some again at some point for a project, sort of a power strip breakout board idea. So it was time to restock. Two sets of 10 pieces TL072 op amps. So two op amps in an eight pin surface mount package. I'll have to find out if they're real eventually, but for now it does say TL072. This doesn't say what it is, but I remember this. Those are drill bit collars and of course a wrench to tighten that set screw. So with a drill bit, if you only want to drill in so far, you could just put tape or something around that's visible and just go that deep. But when you have to make a lot of holes, even that can sometimes slip after a while. So it may be sometimes worth putting a collar on there. I don't know if that can compromise the drill bit grinding into it as you tighten this, or if this may come loose as well, defeating the purpose of just using electrical tape. I just thought I would give it a try, see how it goes. And from Amazon, we have gray tube valve stack simulator. So I assume either a, a distortion or overdrive guitar effect. Probably easiest to just try it. And I got this when it was on sale, but it's also one of those budget brands anyway. So we have the audio and nine volt DC in, audio out, volume, tone, and gain, and a switch for fat, boost, or normal. So different amounts of gain being applied, I guess. So see if it works. So as usual, noise maybe even coming from this, but here it is with the effect off.
So that works, and it seems to be more of a distortion than overdrive. So we have volume, tone, and gain all working. The switch for normal, boost, and fat. From normal to boost, it seems to make it louder, and I can't tell a difference between boost and fat. It might be some sort of EQ thing we can't pick up on this. But for a low cost, I'll say this was a good purchase. So I better get these things put away and organized before I lose them for near-term projects. Thanks to supporters of the channel for helping make this possible.